still use this drawing pad that I have, but I kind of suck with it right now, so just do it with my mouse clicks. I want to practice a little bit. So to get started, let's go from the post all the way in. I want to give you guys something to reference. So our telephone line outside of our house, let's use your house as an example. The top rings are going to be your actual power lines, and then the bottom rings are going to hold your data, your fiber, uh, things like that. Let's say we have our house, and the internet provider comes over. He puts the internet line into your house. If they run the line overhead from the post to the top of your house, it's going to be called aerial. So it's an aerial run. If someone says we can just run an aerial line, that's what they're referring to. So then the line comes down, they punch it to your house, they put the modem in here, you connect your computer or the Wi-Fi. Also, some houses, if they're newer, they'll have a pipe that actually runs down up into the side of the house here. And what the provider will do is they'll actually drop this line through the pipe. It'll pop up, same thing, through the house into the modem. So this pipe is called conduit. So if they just drop the line and they bury it into your grass, that's not conduit. So conduit is actually we're referring to the actual pipe that's going underground. Whether it's in the wall or it's going through the ceiling, it's still called conduit. A side note, you cannot run data with electrical in the same conduit. You will fail an inspection, so don't do that. So if you see an electrical line going through a conduit, don't think it's an easy path and you can just fish through it. Well, let's get over to the business side. Same thing on the business side. Most buildings will have that conduit that's going through and up into the building. It'll pop in. The provider will more than likely drop it to the closest point in the building. After that happens, they'll put their modem in or their equipment in. At the closest point this point right here is our demarc extension it's a demarcation but no one calls it that you'll hear it a lot of people will say you know are you having a problem with the demarc have you checked it past the demarc what that's referring to is from this point back is the provider's job to support it then anything on the other side of this is in our scope of support so we want to remember that now what if our server room is on the other end of the building so how do we get the provider from here all the way to our server room what we do is we make a connection and we run it internally or we have some kind of cable vendor do it. Usually a cable vendor will do it because it's going to go real high up and they'll need lifts and things like that. But on this end, we'll put something called a biscuit jack. So this is a biscuit jack right here. It's just a plastic box and basically you put modular jacks in here, RJ45s, keystone jacks, whatever you call them. This is the same jack. It's just opened up so you can see right in here where you would actually put your modular jacks and that would allow you to connect and then the cable comes out the back there. Since this is our DMARC extension, we would label this DMARC 1, let's say. The reason that I say that we'll name it DMARC 1 is because usually we'll run two and three lines. Since we're running the line anyway, we might as well run more. That way if one fails or anything like that, we'll have an extra. So what are we gonna name the other end? We're gonna name it DMARC 1 as well. We're gonna use our label maker. We'll label both sides. That way we'll be able to find it where the DMARC is and then also in the server room. A more organized company that's maybe a little bit larger will have something called server racks inside of their server rooms. And what those are is they're two post racks, so basically just a rack that goes up inside of the room. That way we can connect all of our equipment to it. This is an example of a two post rack. You can see all the holes in the sides, and this is where we'll actually rack our equipment in. This is an example of an actual rack that's full. So to give you guys a visual, this is what you'd be looking at. The top is our patch panels, and then we have our router here, and then we have our switches, more switches down here. There's a lot of different types of racks. This is a four post. This is if we have a larger server, kind of like the one that I have here. It's made to hold the weight, and then smaller ones that are sometimes wall mounted. All the server racks do the same job, they're just to hold the equipment, but there is a standard size, so there's a standard width. All the companies make their equipment the same length, and if they don't, they'll make extenders, and those are called ears, I'll show you those in a second. But another scenario here, if you look at the line that's dropped, so instead of having another biscuit jack on the opposite end, so we have our biscuit jack here at the DMARC, and then we have our biscuit jack over here, we took that out. So what they'll have is they'll actually terminate it into a patch panel. So if you look down at my camera real quick, this is about how big they are, this is kind of what they look like, that's the back. So what we will do is we will actually terminate the wire into the back of this, and then we'll use this port and we'll label it as well. So this is a close-up look at the same patch panel that I had. So we would label this DMARC1 and DMARC2. This is what the back looks like. So if we zoom in a little bit here, you would just color coordinate and you would punch those wires down. I'll show you guys how to do that in the next video. And then this is a close-up of it. So you can see right here, these pins are these pins here. You would just use this color coding when you're trying to punch these down. I'll show you guys how to terminate these in the next video. There is an A and a B, and you can see the colors are a little bit different on each one. So A is used in Europe mostly, from what I understand, and then B is used in the United States, so you're always gonna use B as your standard if you're in the States. You can see these arrows right here, so we have nine and 10, that means the top one is nine and the bottom one is 10. That's just telling you that if you punch the top one, it's gonna be this, and the bottom one that you punch will be represented by this port here. On the side of the rack, there's gonna be little holes, and that allows us to actually screw in our equipment. So in this photo here, you'll see that these holes are here. These are larger square holes, there's actually inserts that go into them, in this example, it was just the best example that I could find that had these U's. So what I mean by U's is this is a measurement here. So you can see in this one, U25 is represented by these three holes. If it's just screw holes, if they're screwed in, they're just threaded, there'll usually be about four of them in this length here. The reason I mention that, people will ask, how many U does it take up? So a switch would be one, or a UPS, which is a battery backup, which is really thick, could be three or four U. So it's a unit of measurement, and people use it all the time. You could have vendors that'll come in and say, hey, I need 10 U to be able to put my equipment in. So you want to make sure that you don't only have two, three, or four U's. You want to have a large space for them. What's actually screwing into the rack over here, this is a switch, so this is one U. So if it was twice as fat as this, it would take up two U. This right here on the side, these are ears. 
These are interchangeable too. If a company comes out with a router that's only a third of the size, like the 1900 series that I'm gonna use in the example is actually only about two thirds of the size of this. So it has thicker ears, that way it can conform to the standard. So now we've gotten our connection from the post outside, underground, hit the DMARC, we have the provider's equipment, we run through our DMARC, and now we're in the back of the patch panel. Where does it go from there? It's gonna go into our router. If we've terminated into patch panel 48, which is labeled DMARC 1, of course, we would take a patch cord and we would connect it from here to our router. And then out of our router, we would connect from here into our switch. So this box in the drawing at the bottom, it'll represent our switch. It would go actually into one of these ports. And from our switch, we need to make it all the way to the users. I would connect an ethernet cable and I would connect it back to the patch panel. But let's go over the beginning part so that you have a general understanding of how that's connecting actually in the wrap. And then we'll go on to how we get into the users. All right, so now we have our equipment in front of us. I know, I know, sick drawing here. We have our DMARC extension and it's connected to the back of the patch panel. So now we're gonna plug in our ethernet cable to that same port and we're gonna bring it down and we'll plug it into the router. And then from the router, we're gonna go ahead and plug into the switch. And then from the switch, let's say this needs to go to a user, we will plug it into our patch panel. So to keep this stuff organized, we usually have something called wire management that basically runs on the side and it runs underneath and on top here. This is a photo of some pretty standard wire management. So you'd have your patch panel on the top, you'd have your switch underneath it so you can run your cables through here. This cover right here, it pops forward and then we can actually run cables inside of it just to keep everything really clean. We know we're coming from the post outside, underground, to the DMARC extension, which has the provider's modem. And then it comes through the building on our line, our DMARC extension, and then it comes right here and it'll terminate into the back of the patch panel, out the patch panel, into the router, out of the router, into the switch, from the switch back into the patch panel. And this patch panel on the back of all these ports, we're gonna go ahead and run a line up through the ceiling. All of these will go through the same path and these will go to each office. Oh, let's look at that. But from the back of patch panel one, we're gonna come out of it. We're gonna go up through the ceiling, over the top. This is gonna run through the ceiling. You guys start running cable, there is rules to running cable, especially when you're in a ceiling. You have to have plenum cable and a plenum ceiling. So that means if your HVAC is exhausting through the ceiling and it's just going into the ceiling and it's not going through another pipe, let's say, you have to have plenum cable, which means that when it burns, it doesn't get off any toxic fumes. So before you start ripping cable through somewhere, realize that there's rules to it, okay? So let's keep going. So we went out of the server room, through the top, through the ceiling, we come down through the wall, and then we come into this jack. Standard wall plate, modular jack, just pops right in there, okay? Just like that. Our wires will actually connect right here and then we'll plug in our patch cable and then we'll come out and we'll join it right to our computer or our printer or whatever the case may be. When we're troubleshooting this wiring and we're trying to figure out where the disconnect is, just think about it like water. So think if I poured water in one end of this cable, where's it gonna go? So if we poured water in right here at this DMARC extension, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go through the patch panel, it's gonna come out, go into the router, out the router, into the switch, out of the switch, back into the patch panel, through the ceiling, down and out the plate into the computer. If you lose connection somehow, you're gonna start at one end or start at the other. So I like to start at the PC, make sure that I do the easy part, which is just change out this patch cable, maybe plug in my laptop, make sure it's not the computer itself, go after this modular jack or go back into the server room, make sure that's actually patched into the patch panel, into the correct one. On this plate, what are we gonna do? We're gonna label it. On this face plate, we're gonna label it according to the patch panel. That way we always know where the other end is. We took our cable from the switch, we plugged it into the first port, it went out the back and over to the office. That office plate is labeled A1. So we will label this entire patch panel here A. You notice on this wall jack, it's labeled A1. The reason that I did that is because we want both sides to be labeled the same. That way we can find it without using a toner. So on this end, we need to label this A1. If I have multiple patch panels and they're stacked on top of each other, I'll label one A and then I'll label the next one B and the next one C. That way I don't have to label A1, A2, A3, so you can see right here, one, two, three, and so on. So all I'd have to do is go to this patch panel and say, okay, this is A, it's A1. This port right here is going to that office if I'm troubleshooting it. If we look at the server rack example again, we can see that the patch panel is here. Here's one of our switches. Here's another switch down here. This is actually the phone system here, we'll go over that stuff, but this is the router here. Our connection here is gonna go, let's say from here, you can see this port here, and then it's gonna go into our switch. And then from our switch, any of these ports, we're gonna go right back in, and this label will correspond to wherever it goes. It could be an access point, it could be a printer, it could be a fax machine, it could be a bunch of things, but in general, that's your high level view. Let's get a little granular with the next video. We gotta talk about some phone systems, some other connections, and then we'll get to actually physically punching our jacks.